Got it. Are you all consented? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mr. Chris Bradford. Thanks for hey guys. Uh, it's good to have another Bath person online with myself to deal with these two schmucks. Well, you know, I wouldn't get too smart, so I think Kieran and um, Mr. PTJ, PTJ will fuck you up real quick. So, yeah. Oh! Oh, I like Chris. Chris an intro. That's all already, man. All right, He's let's, let's uh, stop and we'll record it again. <laughs> I, I gave my full <laughs> consent to that side. shit. That's a yes. This is That's man, the spirit of the podcast, Chris. <laughs> and those microphone mute controls over right now, man. <laughs> you know, done, done these a few times there. You don't know what you've got yourself into. I don't know in them anymore, man. Shit. Well, Chris had the first Australian podcast, the Eight Weapons podcast with yeah. uh, Mr. James Miles. I really yeah, that was that. Um, good times, good fun back then. As you guys know, you've been doing a few of these now. You get into some good, funny conversations about all sorts of topics. And um, not only can you talk about the good sport of Muay Thai, but you can also talk um, some absolute shit too. So it's good fun. I'm yeah, really I, reckon, uh, I reckon you should bring it back, Chrissy. I'd like to. Like, um, Andy, did we have, I think we had you on there, didn't we? I know we had Sai on there. Um, yeah, we had some really good people in there back in the days with... Jimmy was always a good fundamentals of it. He he always had the brains. Obviously, I don't. But um, I had the wits just to talk the shit. So it was really good. And um, with the contacts we had too, it was, it was good to really explore the Muay Thai scene and what was going on. We could break it down technically. And then we could also have some fun with it too and get involved with um, some of the people to really find out what the pros and what the lifestyle is all about and everything. So it was good. Um, what have you been up to? Like, uh, I mean, I know the fight... That was meant to be with um, Prince. It keeps getting postponed and stuff. So what have you been doing since, I guess? When was it first supposed to be? In May or June? Yeah, it was back in May. So, so boys, it's been a bloody a rough one. As we all know, we've all been through our rough times. Everyone or people watching this has been through their rough times. But just fight camping and then having it pushed back and fight camp pushed back, fight camp pushed back. Look, it's no great big secret. I'm not a young guy. Um, for an older guy to prep, and then stop and then prep and then stop at my age. Oh, really? It fucking nearly kills me, you know? Some nights my girlfriend's carrying me up the stairs because I'm training three times a, a day some days. And that's the reality of it. Like at my age, can't even get up the stairs. Some, some nights I've got to get helped upstairs. So um, I don't miss that shit sometimes. But um, yeah, with almost a year later, it'll, it'll be because I think the date sort of started next year. So. It's just crazy, man. It's um something I wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that that's like uh like you said that like one of the things I, I felt really bad with the shows getting postponed that I was doing was you know the guys having to get built up and come back down. But like you said, I mean you're not giving anything away. People don't know you're in your sort of <laughs> yeah past your past the 21 years old. So um <laughs> I'm sure like the impact of the recovery and stuff's been been insane and you know they've all been such close calls of when we can actually get it started and then yeah i know and you guys all gone through it too like karen up there you got you've had your dramas with Sai, and then jez andy oh new south wales my god like like it look fair enough it affects the sport and it affects like the business side of it but you know us us guys we're all passionate about muay thai and the sport so not only does it impact us on the financial and business side, it fucking breaks our hearts. It really shattered us. So watch our gyms get shut down. Watch the community that we build. Andy, you've got an amazing Thai community up there that gets around your gym. Watching our communities break down that rely on this gym and everything, it's it's heartbreaking sometimes. It really is. And um, yeah, to see everything about to open back up from our side of things, it's amazing and a relief too. So it's good. Yeah, and I think like thinking from the outside, I mean, I think since last time we were on a podcast together, you um, top tier has kind of gone and is now part of uh, Elite Training Center, Johnny Burke, one of your ex fighters, gyms. Yep. Um, and like from the outside, it's it's kind of a dream scenario where he's he's really sort of the business and marketing side of the overall gym, and then you're sort of like taking care of more of the training and the branding and stuff. How's that been working out? Yeah, that's um, it's pretty much well worded exactly how we run it now, Si. Um, Johnny's a really good businessman. He prides himself on it. And if you talk to, to Berkey, he'll say, look, I'm, I'm, I've had a few fights, but I'm not a fighter. I like business. And goddamn, he's got his fingers in every pie. He's got businesses everywhere. He's doing really well. 
me and my heart's in the gym. I love to be amongst the fighters. I love to be amongst the people. And I love to be fighting myself. God knows when I'll ever retire again. But yeah, but um, it's worked out really well. It's structured well for us now. You know, I, I can do what I need to do at the gym, get what I need to get done, make what I need to make financially and um, get all my own training and prep in as well. So don't have to worry about bloody landlords or anything like that or now too. So it's a, it's a big, big relief off my, off my back and um, helps me concentrate on my, my training too. And which is actually, I don't put a lot of my training up these days on my, on my social media, but I've definitely changed since the old days of, of my fight style. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting back in there again. So it's been two and a half years and just, no, it's under different rules, but I still got a few tricks, and just you're going to see a new type of um, AK-47 moving around the ring. So I'm excited about that too. What's the rules meant to be? Is it K-1 or kick straight kickboxing? <clears throat> I tried to talk him into K-1, but no, we made the agreement for kickboxing, unfortunately. But um, that's cool. That's cool. I've still still got a couple of little tricks in there, which obviously I don't want to give away too much, but. Um, yeah, you've got your little your little tricks up your sleeve. I'm trying not to say too much here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's a lot of when you watch watch from a Muay Thai point of view, and then you watch kickboxing. You see where you can catch punches and counter. Um, you know, you kind of parry stuff and counter and that as well. And I've still got that mindset where I'm not falling away from my Muay Thai. I'm always a Muay Thai fighter at heart. Um, but I'm just going to adapt and be different, and that's what is going to make the fight fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to lose, that's for sure. Um, and then, yeah, it should be a good entertaining fight. It's going to be big crowds already sold out anyway. Poor crowd. They've had their hard times shifting with us. But, um, yeah, it's one that's really going to reach out for the, the kickboxing scene. So I'm privileged to be helping out with a rebirth of the kickboxing scene, so to speak. Mm. Andy, second week back at the gym. How's it been going? Uh, third now, I think. Third, Andy. I don't know. I think I'm back. But I before I go on to that, I have to say, Chris, the banter between you and Prince, some of those <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that was fucking hilarious, man. I mean, <laughs> watching all that go through, but all the meals, are like while well, you're training your ass off, and then he's snacking on KFC. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> man, I kind of greatest line. Why have abs when you can have kebabs? I was like, dude, you got to. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it son's motto now. You're gonna get the wall. It is good. It is good. Um, it's helped. It's helped with. Um, it's it's got to be. Our band has been good, but some of the crew jumped on board. Took me a bit personal sometimes, but we're we're good. We are mates. We'll punch a shit out one another. No problem at all. But yeah, the band has been good, Andy, for sure. It's yeah, entertained a lot of people. Some of the random guys that obviously more from, I think, kind of peripheral guys around his. Certain so gym and stuff, I think they don't know you and they don't know the scene, and they do, yeah. they jump up. I'm like, whoa, 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 relax, guys. Yeah, relax. yeah. <laughs> well, it's that, that scene too. Like, here we are, all Muay Thai fighters and Muay Thai groups, and you know, we're, we fight one another at home. Whoa. 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 My internet was bad, man. Man. So- that's such a long internet right there. Do you turn you in the house? <laughs> you lost him. Andy. Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, the gym. lockdown question, bro, while we get him back. Um, yeah, it's going all right, man. First week was a little bit slow. There's a little bit of hesitancy there, but now, like, we're starting to rock and roll a bit, which is good. So um, the welfare payments are starting to dry up. So all the um, concentrations on trying to get bums on seats, but... That's all good. And then the fighters are now starting to train pretty hard too because um, going to have a little gym war soon with a, some random gym we know. Um, and then get ready for December 4 and 12. So mm. good times, man. Good times. Um, how are you finding the numbers? Um, yeah, they're coming back now, which is good, man. Like um, we've obviously got the mandate in here and um, our demographics... I think I've spoken about once before. Our demographics it hasn't been a real major issue. Um, got like something like ninety-two percent double vax in the area, so that hasn't really impacted it that much. We did have some hesitancy in the first, especially the first week and second week. You know, people haven't been out of their rooms for three months, so 
those types of people, it's been a little bit tricky, but you know, even the fighters now are starting to get a little bit more comfortable and um, we're a little bit mindful of that when everybody first started. So um, numbers are good, man. Like newbies are coming back and then the guys who are um, on hold, I think that blend between the new guys coming through and then the guys who are on hold, come November, we're all just going to be sky high. That's the fucking dream anyway. So Are you getting many new people jumping in? Yeah, it's good. It's been steady, man. Yeah. I think um, just people, I, I, I feel like in our areas is a little bit different to last time. Last time was like a definite line in the sand. Um, as soon as the doors opened, like it was thing this time because some of the areas were hit pretty hard, um, that hesitant. And it was longer, man, like, like a legit lockdown this time. So that's why it hasn't been like that. It's been a little bit more like that. So... Um, yeah, we're good. Eha, there we go. We're back. <laughs> so, yeah. back. Sorry, guys. Good. So, um, Chris, how's um, how's the gym been with the return? Have you been getting most of the people back? Yeah, look, I think it's a funny one, isn't it? Um, most of the people have been coming back. Um, and then we're getting a, a lot of people from other gyms that have had a few dramas, so uh, which is good. We've been getting feedback off them, but then. The confidence in the classes, I think, is something that uh, is yet to come back because I think everyone's worried everything's going to get shut down again too. Um, so it's been consistent. Membership-wise, it's been good. Just classes are varying up and down with numbers. That's the only thing. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that'll all, hopefully that'll all get fixed because you guys up there, Simon Karen, you start up tomorrow, yeah? We start on – yeah, my, we can start up at 6 p.m., on Friday, so my first class is 8 a.m. and we've got really good uptake, so we've got lots of people booked in, which is great. Yeah, I'm not gonna yep. do a countdown class, man. Sorry, I'm not gonna do a countdown class. <laughs> not, I don't do that sort of the sentimental stuff. 8 a.m. come in, everyone comes in, things just go back to normal. Ooh, go team, timer, start calling people names. We pretend nothing happened, everyone goes yeah. to the spot. It's like, oh. What about you, Karen? How, how's your gym been? Man, we're back tomorrow too. So we pretty yeah. much timed up with Victoria. So we, I think the, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're the whole of, of Canberra, so I don't use the joke three episodes in a row, has a, well over 90% for double vac. So we have no mandates down here or anything yeah. of the sort. And, and I think confidence is, is pretty high here. I mean, we've been at our... The past maybe three or four days with the same average amount of tests, we've only been having maybe seven, eight or nine positive cases a day. So we we had that, we had the peak. I mean, the peak for us was, you know, 30 cases, not yeah. 18 and 1900, but for us relative to our population of 400,000 was still big, right? So I you think it's 400,000 people in Canberra. Correct. Si. Oh, correct. Actually, it was bigger than that. Did you? I can't believe it's 400,000 people there. That's crazy. It was a million at least. Nah. Uh, um, so, yeah, we're, we're back tomorrow. So, we're back well, to classes. We've got a 20 person, 20 people at class cap, like I think everywhere else does for the most part. We got uh, no cap. Hey. Yeah. We've got a density limit. Oh. So we have that as well. We have a, we have a cap, class cap and a density limit. Mm. We've got no other restrictions, I think, as of tomorrow, that other than. Uh, square meter it's so uh, we're about 400 and something square meters so we could technically have 100 people in the class which you know there's going to be 100 people in the class yeah, yeah exactly it's been like as you guys know my gym or johnny's gym we're well, one of the probably biggest gyms like you know in victoria and when it came in you could only have 10 people in the gym at a time like we've got three stories Mm. And oh my god, it was it was just sad just watching all this space get wasted. But mm. yeah, but now we're uh with a lifted and all the limits back off, get everyone back in there and um get get the recovery rooms going as well. God, they're important to me. I miss the recovery rooms so badly. What you got there, man? We got like a massive big ice bath that go runs 24-7. So the ice bath, Andy, is absolutely heaven. If um, any of your fighters haven't done it before, which I'm sure they have, the ice, ice bath and a hot 
shower, that recovery use in those is just unbelievable and I cannot speak highly enough of it for, for any fighter. And um, we've got sauna there as well, so that really helps for our recovery in that as well. I'm in that probably three times a week. Um, ice bath, I'm almost in it every day. And, um, yeah, it's just it's really good set up there, little monsoon showers and everything. So Johnny's done a really good job of setting the place up and then bringing top tier down there has just gave it the extra bit of credit. So it's been great, great joining together. Yeah. Is it is opening up a second weights gym as well, yeah, that carbon gym? Yeah, correct, carbon gym. So Johnny's he's gone in um, partnership with that. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I'll get a membership over there. I'll train over there in the mornings and then I'll go and do everything at night at, um, at our gym. So it'd be good for a little bit of a change up and, um, bit of change of space so that'd be really good but yeah he's he's gonna be big state of the art equipment once again too his um business partners um stepping into it really big so probably gonna see one of the more advanced um gyms like that going around victoria as well with carbon gym so it's gonna be fantastic sick um so guys uh last week i think the only big international fight to uh, show to talk about a national was lion fight in london town and yep. the main event it was a couple of guys we're both very familiar with uh yakub benko who fought twice on rebellion against toby and then uh chris one of chris's good melbourne friends ex-melbourne friends joe bubia so that was the main event for the cruiserweight title and um <coughs> chris, sorry <laughs> sorry Yes, list up all the. <laughs> um, yeah, it was funny because I, I sent it to Toby when he uh, Yakub walked out. They said, "Oh, you know," described him and then said, "Um, you know." And he had at one stage he beat Toby. I'm like, he didn't beat Toby, but uh, man, he did. A, he had a great performance. You guys see the fight? He stopped Joe in the second round. I um I did see the results. I seen a couple of highlights, but I didn't actually see the stoppage. So, what did he get stopped with? So. So he, he got hit with the two low kicks, and I think two, and he went down on the second one and he came back up and I think he copped another low kick and as he was losing his balance, he ate a right hand. I'm not sure if it was the right hand that, had, that did it or the low kicks, but yep. there was one definite low kick that Yakub landed and Joe straight away kind of buckled. Yep. Uh, but really interesting for me was like, obviously like the commentators kept saying, oh, Joe looks like he really wants to use his hands. And I think he'd sort of taken a page out of like Toby's second fight with Yakub and just went, I'm just going to box this guy. But having been watching all of Yakub's training in the last few months and stuff, they've gone a really, uh, they've started to work on his strength and getting him bigger and le- getting his hands a lot more solid because obviously, you know, he's got, really good long knees and stuff and he can elbow but um and he's got a lovely left uppercut but he's just like his boxing guard and defense was a bit lacking so i think they prepared that so that was his first title defense on line fight which was really good to see you could win well because that was a lower weight too than he fought man wasn't it yeah he was at cruiser weight so what's that 83 kilos or something or 81 which um, I think Yakub, when he came out here to fight Toby, he said he was uh, walking around at 79 kilos at Shit. six foot 1,000 or whatever he is. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. But look, it, it's always going to be a tough fight when you fight him, that's for sure. But um, some, and I'm interested in here, Kieran and, and Andy, your, your opinions on this too. I think sometimes with the full tie style, I know we've talked about it, so I, the low kick catches a lot of the pure tie, tie stylists out because they forget about that. It's all about kicking the arms and stuff. And they forget how much chopping that leg can really smash someone up. I don't know. What's your opinion, Andy, Karen? Um, I, I think it just depends on the fighter, man. Like, if they're going to send them, they've got to send them hard. And mm. you're right on that aspect. Some, like, some guys are just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll just walk through a couple to give them back. But that can really, like... Yeah, that can be pretty nasty, and a, but also a good way to be slowed down. But if they're well schooled, then uh, I I also find that um, the leg kicks can be a, a 
and if they're not timed well, can be a detriment, more of a detriment to the person throwing them. Um, yep. Someone's well schooled because, yeah, a block a couple, a couple of solid good ones down low, then they're going to be a lot more reluctant to throw leg or body kicks on that side, you know. But um, I think you're right. For some guys, they're, they're just too busy concentrating on the on the body kick. And I, I think as well, drilling, we drill a lot after the low kick to kick straight up to the body. Just because if you do start to rely on, on low kicking a lot it, to stop them, which you will often do, but what happens if you don't, right? Like you don't get enough clean kicks and you've wasted a lot of time kicking the leg and maybe not done the damage you needed to and not scored properly. And so we spend a lot of time, if you're not really burying the leg, if you do land a shot on the leg, boom, like skip straight back up into a body kick. Yeah, gotcha. And get another shot on top afterwards. Yeah. But man, I love I love a good heavy, I love a good low kick. Like watching yeah. a really big heavy low kicker just slowly chop someone down, or even that quick, almost that like Liam Harrison sort of yes, like that mid two thousands K one Mac <laughs> style, really quick foot, that quick low kick. I enjoy watching that too, man. The the good low kickers are really enjoyable to watch. Yeah. Um, Chris, you when you fought Mimsy on um, Johnny's show, that was you, you stopped him with a low with low kicks, yeah. Yeah, take care of uh, low kicks, yeah. But I wasn't the I was the corner, but like I think against guys like him, who is like really focusing on trying to walk you down and and uh, clinch, and he wasn't really like he, the way he was coming in, he really couldn't block him. So I think you landed so many heavy low kicks, and I remember that fight, and we were just like. Came in the corner, I think Clint and I were like, if you don't block these kicks, <laughs> you're going to be pretty. I sat there, I'm like, you know, he fought Kyoko Shin and shit. He can low kick you for like another two hours. I don't want Prince to know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just something I've noticed. But on the flip side of that, there's nothing I see, I love more seeing a tie that can obviously kick a concrete pillar in half committing that 150% to a low kick and it's just scary to watch some of the ties commit to an absolute low, low kick you know with absolutely 100% commitment because you're going geez it could end someone's leg pretty quickly right there and then that's like when we had um Mr Knock when he came out to Australia and then he did a seminar at the gym and uh Ton was holding the Fairtex briefcase on his leg and we were just all standing around going you understand someone can kick hard, but at the end of the day, the bloke's 55 kilos. Like, how yeah. much mass can you actually to do to get that amount of movement on a on a leg? I was just like, man, unbelievable. Like, it's just you're 55 kilos, dude. Where's this coming from? <laughs> mm. One of my favorite pages on Instagram, if you get a chance, Muay Thai Galaxy. Um, wow. you, the videographer, the guy who he's kind of like a Tom Gat. He's all, He's always sitting in the uh, big stadiums right down there. He doesn't do like the highlight reels and stuff, but he's really good at capturing key exchanges in um, in the stadium fights. Oh, nice. So, uh, fucking so sick. Whether it's a leg kick or a body kick or takedowns, he's just got a really good eye for capturing those moments. Check it out. What was that again, Andy? Just repeat that again. Galaxy. All right. Okay. I have to definitely check that out. I love Favorite pages. a good, good couple of exchanges like that. Mm, good page. Um, on the topic of low kicks, I know it probably makes good sense to all of us, but there's people who probably listen to Professor Joe Rogan on this a lot because it's such a big thing on in MMA. I know where you go, man. Let's no, go. The, the calf kicks. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. And I'm always like, oh, why doesn't this happen more in Muay Thai? Why do you reckon? No, no. You don't have to. Say, you have to say to me. Historical <laughs> question. End of subject. Moving on. Come on, bro. Come on, man. These the idiots. They don't understand the Muay Thai, so we're just going to move on. Um, yeah, I'll look, like if they're done, let, let, let's like. I don't want to. Yeah, I'll fucking slag them off all day. But there are. There's like that one where people aren't blocking correctly, and if they're blocking straight up, that's the time for it. Or if you're gonna jog to the uh, like sidestep and then come around the side, mad. Um, you can do a fake, like um, Sing Love's doing them. Like it's, all, it's a fake kick basically, which is the, he'll use the um, inside of his uh, arch of his foot, chocolate too. It'll just be like a, it's a tap to draw a reaction, but 
other than that, man, I reckon you got a fucking death wish trying to kick some kind in the car, person in the car. Yeah, definitely. I could not. Oh, I agree totally with you, Andy. Fuck. Yeah. I just shit, and I see it starting to trend. The calf kicks and that. And I'm going fuck me. All they need to come out against is a decent blocker, and fuck me, there's a snap shin for sure. And it's the stance thing that they don't. They just don't ever say it's like an MMA stance based around shooting takedowns and being punching dominant versus a style where the lead leg is so busy kicking and kneeing and teeping and defending. Kicking that on a calf is so much different than in MMA. It's like... It is, uh, totally. And the, st- the stance is so much wider too, so it's not as rigid whether you kick the calf cleanly or catch a bit of shin as well when you kick it. You just... You run the risk on both sides so much, like of of doing so much damage because yeah, it's like it's wider and it, it wider in the stance. You're not as rigid, so yeah, it's a bit more give there, but it's it's that much give between that and the you know. So I don't know. That's my opinion anyway. I I if someone throws a calf kick in my gym, I fucking go off my head. <laughs> I hate it. Those um Onyx guys, I so they're designing a. You know, like the Fairtex uh, low kick uh, buckle thing, making one for calf kicks so guys can they can hang it below the trainer's knee so they can practice low kicks on the on the calf. I'm like, man. Oh wow. Yeah. It's like you can't pay me enough to stand there all like, oh yeah. sure. Clearing yeah. the leg, like if a boxer's coming heavy handed on the front yeah. foot and just clearing the lead leg, you're still not kicking the leg. You're like using the again the palm of the foot or your instep to like tap and drag you're not like oh. <laughs> yeah 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 and I, I think to what andy said before too like it's not never say never because there is that example of if you do step off to that direction and you you do have a better angle there absolutely but if you don't have the skill or the ability to time and read that properly it's just not worth the trouble right if you're smart enough to i had um I, I had a stoppage win when I was fighting from kicking the calf. Not yeah. I wasn't trying to be smart. He just held his but chest. That's kind of as high as you can kick. So yeah, just thanks, man, I, that. I just kept kicking the leg and got the stoppage. I wasn't being smart. I wasn't thinking about it by any means. But that time, again, time and place. But can you do it and can you do it safely? And if you choose to do it, you wear the risks, right? I think for the most part, it's like, just don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe it's got a time and a space for everything in like MMA and stuff. Um, very th- that big a time and place, mind you, in my opinion. But um, fuck, if anyone's throwing them in fucking kickboxing or Muay Thai or in K1 on purpose, they head red. That's it. Hello, Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 And um, Chris, you, you fought uh, the personality side aside. You fought Joe Bouvier twice. Um, what did you find his biggest his biggest strength was? That you like, you know. I mean, I was surprised he was getting a like a promotional world title shot. But what what do you think his biggest strength is like as a fighter? Well, I don't think he used it to be honest. Like he was obviously fitter the second time, and. When he let his kicks go, he's like he's probably two or three inches taller than me. And when he used his length, and I don't know just his why he wanted to, to fight me. Um, when he used his length, his length, he could kick me and he could kick me well. And I struggled to counter him because he was so long. So it was hard to step back in the counter straight away and catch him back type thing. Um, so definitely his length, but for some reason he didn't really use it. And um I know they thought they had I had the plan that I was going to fight him like I did the first time, just walk in and maul him like I did the first time and they were going to counter. But fuck, I've had 40 plus pro fights. So I'm not going to fight the exact same way like I did this first time against a guy I know has had a longer campaign, fitter, and knows me from what he fought me the first time. That's just walking in a suicide if you're going to fight him the same way, in my opinion, anyway. So I had to adjust and um, made the little adjust adjustments. I think I won, which obviously he doesn't. But, um, yeah, I think I did enough on points and everyone agreed with him too. Um, now fighting heavyweight, um, how the heavyweight, how's the heavyweight power feel compared to one of my favourite fights of yours, which is 
for a lot, most of that fight, it wasn't my favorite fight of yours, but against Wei Tan, where uh, on Rebellion 5, where he went to town with the body kicks. Yeah. How do you find the difference between f- getting kicked by someone like him and then your Steve McKinnons and those sort of guys? I honestly feel um, more comfortable. I can feel I can wear it more. Steve McKinnon, man, he kicked a lot, kicked high, kicked low, did well, won the fight, outscored me for sure, tried to muscle me away a little bit too much. I think with with me sitting up my little bit of weight, it helps me withstand a little bit more and I'm a bit more comfortable in it. I can almost unskillfully, you could say, muscle my way in sometimes. And it's not the smartest thing to do, don't get me wrong, but I'm a pig-headed, stubborn prick sometimes and I just love to go toe-to-toe. So I lose the finesse and I lose the, the game of it all and I go, just go, ah, bite down. And, but definitely getting kicked by Wadering, as we all seen, fuck, that hurt. It just smashed the shit out of me and being at that way, dealing with someone with that much power, which I still don't regret taking that fight to this single day, Um I'm more comfortable taking kicks at this weight these days at a heavier weight for sure. But as I said, I'm a stubborn bastard. You remember, Sai, you gave me three options, one, two, and three. I said, Sai, shut up. You know I want the third option, the toughest one. <laughs> that was that Blake's, poor Blake's last fight too, I think. I think maybe he had one more fight in Thailand. That was it. I think he blew it. I think when he got knocked out, he blew his knee out as well. Yeah, I, I got the lowdown. Apparently, it took him a long while to recover from that knockout. And then he was suffering with something and he blew his knee out like he had a bit of vertigo problem or something, or, you know, when you get a bit uneven. And that was part of the reason he blew his knee out or something. Yeah, so, look, he's, I've talked to him a little bit on Facebook. He's a good kid, but um, I think his Muay Thai days are finished now for sure. Yeah, it was such a shame. I think as a marketable tie to bring out, like if he kept fighting... The, the knockout loss here aside, I think he was real fun because he was just, a, he had that attitude. It was a bit of a bad dude. Oh, there we go. There's his shirt up there. That's, that's marketable for sure. That guy, um, and of course, Rebellion Muay Thai. <laughs> but yeah, he was a real marketable tie. And um, yeah, uh, a good good attitude towards it all too. I'm don't, not sure what he was like in the gym, but yeah. I thought he got traded to, or, or Tim might have bought him out. I can't remember. At the time, but yes, he did. You're right, and he went um, down to Phuket. I think. Yeah, I think that was right, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he was in Phuket, and then uh, Bangkok team brought him over. And the fight they showed me was he actually fought at Bangla, and they had some Westerner dude in there that they chucked him from another gym, and they just thought, "Oh, this is like a big tie that can't do anything." And mm-hmm. went on just like two seconds in, head kicks this dude and knocks him out. And the guy's like halfway out of the ring, mangled up. And they're like, I think Tim said they were a bit upset because he wasn't meant to actually know how to fight. This is like yeah. some German dude just getting like kicked across the neck. I was like, sick. I'm like, yeah, let's bring him out. I wish, um, I, wish I actually had. Uh, so my trainer from Thailand, that's probably my probably one of my fondest memories and what I call my fame to glory type thing is that fight. So I was written up in um, one of the Thai new pa- newspapers over there about um, me beating Waitheron and stuff. It was okay. really, they sent me all the articles and all that. It was pictures of us rebellion and all this translate. Like, obviously I can't read it, but yeah, it was, wow, I made the Thai paper. That's like, you know, it's like a kid's dream when you're growing up to make a Thai paper sort of thing about the fight scene. So that was one of my really, really, good fond memories especially about rebellion too but also my fight career yeah. lovely good old times yeah um, coming up this weekend boys there's two main shows uh destiny up in queensland and muay thai grand prix in wa kieran who's on it what's the lowdown so i think we've got destiny we have the main event we got jay tonkin his second fight back in australia and matt webb his first fight back for what i think is probably over two years now i think it's his it's the defense of his title that he holds at uh super middleweight so he's got the wbc australian title at super middleweight and it is the defense of that it's the first fight back after he won it the last time which i think was against josh wiltshire on destiny as well 
So that's the main event. There's a few WBC state titles on the show as well. And then a, a few of the show titles too. Um, but that would, yeah, that would be the main event for that. So that'll be an interesting one. I think Jay's, um, like Jay was living in Sydney when he fought James Honey on eruption, but now he's up north. Yeah, he's up past, um, he, he, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, the beach. Whit Sorry, Whit Sunday is up that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Look, yeah. Looking fit. Looking Not sure fit. what the training would be like up there, but Jay's one of those guys that always kind of, um, he, he he's responsible for his own fitness a lot of the time and does well that way too, man. So, um, oh, I love that shit. I've talked to Jay a little bit uh, on social media too. He's a, a good dude, and obviously I'm going to run with him because he's my mate and everything. Because hopefully winning the fight, but um, absolutely that kid is responsible for his own his own destiny. Whatever you know, he doesn't rely on anyone to pull him out of bed, doesn't rely on anyone to get his ass in gear to go to training. He's a committed, committed person, committed to the grind. And um, fuck, I love that shit. And um, good luck to him as far as I'm concerned. Be a good fight. I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I because Matt is, Matt, Matt, man, he, Matt's the only one that I've seen, like I cornered, um, or when uh, Peter won fought Matt, back when yep. and I always feel like Matt's been one of those guys that's like been really underrated um but that being said he's had a couple of like up and down fights too so um I, man I'm really I reckon this is going to be a sick fight I, this mm. is one that I'm genuinely quick quick, quick, quick and strong Matt's quite slick but he's got a lot of power I've held pads for Matt before and he's yeah. like he he is strong there is a lot of power behind behind his shot but as we know Jay is as well right and he's tough and just i mean jay's fought up as 76 75 before right so yeah if jay concentrates on like the task at hand mm. and can do that and, and have a strategy i reckon he'll win but if he's if he's just there to fight and matt's got a smarter game plan then then matt could like come out just from being that way you know so and maybe. when matt on being smart in a fight he's really hard to beat too the, like the way he moves He's got good evasion, and I like it. It's really good. What weight did um, Jay fight uh, Chuck, Andy, on your show? Might have been 69 or something, man. And yeah. then he fought James at 74? Yeah, but, he, I mean, he's, really, he's still young. So, like, yeah. when he came back then, I think he was, at like, I don't even know if he was, like, 20 or 20. Like, he was really so... And he just had that like man spurt where, um, yeah, yep. like, man's coming through now, and, and like he's got a thick set now as well. So it's maturing. So it'll be interesting. I, I like that weight for him too. But I think at 76, he's too small, like potentially, but 72 will be a real hard cut for him. So got to try and find a, a balance. Is this at, is it for 76 or for 72? 72 and a half middleweight. Sick. Well, that's good. That's a good weight for him. Yeah, because Matty, when he fought um, uh, Ching on your show, you, you sort of recommended him for me to bring out, and he came out and fought Alex Ilyoski. Um, And I think as far as middleweights go, they were underrated. I think Alex was definitely right up there, such a good fighter. And yeah. then he, that's gone, and uh, his last – he won this title against another Queensland guy. I, I, I've never heard of the guy, but I don't – Sometimes I get lost with some of the Queensland names and things. Um, but, yeah, so good yeah. fight for him. And uh, that's, that's a pretty good close even fight. Anyone got a favourite on that? Oh, shit. That's a, it's a hard one. I think what Andy says is right. I think if Jay's got – if Jay's, like, switched in, I think he's got the ability to beat Matt. But Matt is, like, quite very slick. And if Jay just walk forward and he tries to be stubborn uh, – We're not going to – I reckon we call it the podcast is still new, man. I think we've got to like draw in the line in the sand now and just like start fucking picking cunts. <laughs> hey, I'm the worst. Don't pick it. I don't care. I'm picking Jay. Um, I reckon he's too powerful and too big. I think I think Matt's just gonna out I think Matt's gonna outpoint him. Jay. So I where's your how you going, man? Man, I literally haven't. I've only seen Jay fight. I haven't seen Matt fight in ages. So oh, I'm going gonna to go with Jay. I'm going to go with Jay. What did yeah. Andy say? Jay. Uh, maybe I'll go the other way. No, <laughs> I'm going to go with Jay. 
Um, but, mate, I'm looking forward to it. Good fight. I really am. The, the other fight is um, the, a couple of other fights of note. The other one is the Destiny Super Welterweight Pro title between uh, Jonathan Alu and is it also Jonathan Tohu? I don't know his first name. Yeah. Like it, you guys watched both these guys? Mm. They're both freaks, right? I've, I've watched them both live. Mm. Um, Alu, like I'm good friends with. We talk a lot on social media. These guys are very, very tricky and very well taught. Um, fuck, that's an exciting matchup. It really is. I don't know how much you guys have seen of them, but they are two very tricky, very um, heavy-handed when they want to be, but can just step off and use their balance and use all their tricks that they've got in their games, no problem at all. So it's a very, very exciting matchup. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, Jonathan Alu. We've sort of tried to get it happening here a couple of times, and um, there's always been because a lot of times – sort of uh, either eruption or um, Adam King show has been sort of within a month or something. We, we haven't got it that, done, but I've seen him fight it quite a bit. He's beaten a lot of the guys from Melbourne who I think were a little bit sort of jumping up in, in standard to fight him. I honestly, Jonathan, too, I've, I've seen a couple of highlights of him fight, but I, 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 I don't know if like the last time I know he had a fight in, a show that I know of that he won, but um, yeah, for me, I think Jonathan A. is the uh, probably the top two 70 kilo guys in Australia, so I think he'll, he'll have that. Yeah. I, I went, man, I watched two when we matched him and seen like Chris, you're so right, man, about his explosiveness and stuff. That's the first time I think even my brother said it, that's his, his favorite fight of watching Singh fight him because just that first like couple of shots that two who put on him it was like whoa like he's got crazy power but again it's that concentration game and as well and I think Aulu's going to be um I think it's just going to be too sleek and, and too focused on the job at hand personally but we'll see how we go um is he uh from Papua New Guinea yeah Chris you'd remember back in the day Tarek Select used to promote the headhunter yep That's and he just yeah. Take people's yeah. heads off. It was uh, pretty crazy back then, but I think uh, the difference definitely between him is with his upbringing and who he's been coached by over the years for sure. But you can see that in the styles. That's that's a hundred percent the way. But um, man, I'm actually I'm so I'm caught up in thinking about that matchup. But it's actually excited me so much thinking about that matchup again because it's a great stylistic matchup and two phenomenal athletes. But yeah, it'll be one to watch, that's for sure. Ben Johnson took him back to the homeland. I remember watching some sick videos of him when he was up at uh, the uh, fight. Is it the, uh, the fight center? I think he, it's called now up in uh, yeah. Brisbane. Yeah. Videos of Tuhu going back. It was like watching Muhammad Ali go back to Africa, man. It was so sick. <laughs> you know, yeah. In the, in the mountains and shit. It was so good. Yeah, that's awesome shit. Really cool to see. And the other fight, I guess, of a big name would be Jazzy Parr returning after she's had her hip surgery. She's fighting. I only can read her surname. I don't know what this girl's first name is. I apologize. Um, and that's the Destiny Flyweight title. You gonna read her last name? Ryan. Callie. Callie Ryan. Callie Ryan. Mm. Callie actually fought. Um, so Callie's, I'm pretty sure it was her last fight. She fought boxing against Taylor, the girl that fought Shannon O'Connell on the weekend just past on the Gold Coast fight night. So that that um, Taylor, is it Robertson? Taylor Robertson that fought Shannon yeah. O'Connell? Yep, yep. Yeah. So Callie fought that um, Taylor. I think it was her last fight. for. Uh, they had a pro boxing fight. I think Callie might have made her debut. And then... Um, but I, I think prior to that, she fought Erin Harburger up in Queensland as well. I remember seeing that. And she fought my girl, Kelly fought my girl, Davina, Diandra Martin's younger sister as well, um, on, on, Adam, on Adam's show, Adam King's show. All right. Um, and then across the other side of Australia, uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix Australia, um, this Friday night, 29th of October. Um. Oh. And I believe the main event is now James Honey versus Lucas Sayer. Is that the main event? Yep. Yeah. 
platform on Macmillan Tea. So I think um, uh, Riddler's boy uh, had to pull out with a in- neck injury, and James Honey's just jumped in to save the day. Okay. I hope the boys are all right with a neck injury. It's always scary when you hear that stuff. Mm. Shout out to both boys, though. You've got James taking a, a main event fight on a few days' notice. Yep. And then you've got Lucas jumping up to 75, who he's quite tall and long in stature, but he's not a 75 kilo fighter by any means. That's not, you know, he fights 70, 72, but no, um, you know, he fought Marco Tentori. He fought Tyler on the last Muay Thai Grand Prix. Um, but that's for both of them. It's like just making it happen, right? It's just two fighters that want to fight yeah. and they're making it happen. So shout out to them both. That's really cool. Yeah, very good call. Very good call. Anyone that can just step up like that, you know, they're real fighters and they're there for, for the sport, that's for sure. Mm. Um, and I think it's the final of the uh, four women that they had at the um, the last empty, the road to Muay Thai Grand Prix, the last show. So it's um, Allegra Vickis versus Megan Berberic. Mm. Right. With... Allegra, I think Allegra didn't. Allegra actually lost her first in that four woman, but she took. She's taken that place in the final because the winner of that the 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 winner of that match didn't make weight when they first uh, at that first leg. She didn't make weight, so she was told even if she won, she couldn't go through to the end. So Allegra actually lost that first fight in the four woman, <clears throat> but is taking that final spot versus Megan. Yeah. And correction, like, sorry, I made a mistake. I read in read the Wayne date. The actual show is on Saturday night as well, October 30th at Curtin Stadium uh, at Curtin University. Um, where's Burberry from? Riddlers. 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 Cool. That's Lloyd Dean's significant other. Uh, uh, much, much of my matchmaking, uh, the, the romance apparently kindled while they were here for Rebellion. Oh, you're a man of many talents, aren't you? So, shit. Well, I do what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> anyway, nothing like a post Wayne Ziggy's to bring a nice, fine young couple together. Uh, no, that's a spot. Speaking of Ziggy, shout out to Aram Diaz, who's uh, had his birthday this week. Also, banned for life at Ziggy's. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. right? <laughs> I want the blue ale. He's he's probably going to call me again and explain to me the entire situation again for ten minutes. I'm going to go. Yep. I was really bar, yep. Man, I, was man, I wasn't there, and I've heard it seven times. I feel like I was there. It was great. Let's <laughs> go. Cool. It was That's great. Cool. Now, Chrissy, every um every week we talk about a couple of different uh, topics. We try not to keep it controversial because apparently. Peter Sherwood says we bring up too many grievances. Uh, right. you, we have lost a general... followers the last couple of weeks. Sorry, could be a wrong good boy then because I love a good argument. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. um, the, what do you guys? Uh, so there's obviously people who leave gyms and they leave in the way they leave. But yeah. what do you guys think about um, gyms? No, Chris. No. Okay. No, I was, I was, sorry. Go go go. Um, what are your thoughts about fighters? Not so much general members because you know they it is what it is, they can do what they want to do. Um, cross training at other gyms, especially around fight time. Uh, I'll go first. So, sparring, I think, thinks totally fine, p- providing that they do the right etiquette, you know, trainers discuss because ultimately, if they get injured and it comes around to fight time. And my fighter didn't tell me they were going to spa and I didn't know about it. And they go and injure themselves and can't fight. I'll be really fucked right off. So obviously that's the first thing that comes, comes to mind. Um, <clears throat> as for if they go somewhere and start, say, doing pads with another gym or another trainer, I'm not really down for that because I've got my own style and my way I like to teach. On top of that, when they step into the ring and against that opponent, they're representing everything that we've built together as our gym and our brand and our style. So I want that to be overall the winning thing that wins the bout. I don't want, oh, but so-and-so helped out a little bit or why don't I do what so-and-so said when you told me to do this? Because it just doesn't fucking work in my opinion. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's where I'm at with that. Obviously, sparring, providing they know what they're doing with sparring, I'm down for that. But yeah, with the whole pads and shit like that, I, I think it's a bad idea personally. Kieran? Yeah, I'm, I'm much the same. If you were to go and spar, well, that makes sense because it lets them get the experience. But I've never understood when I've seen... If, if, it's, if it's prearranged and for a really specific purpose and there's really clearly defined parameters, well, then I understand it. Say if there was maybe a traditional, like a, a gym that's quite heavy kickboxing and they go, hey, my guy's having a Thai boxing fight and we can't clinch, I'm going to send them off to XYZ gym. I, I would sort of understand that because it's within the parameters. But for, for me, it's if, if you run a gym and you are the coach, like you are responsible and you direct your athlete on what to do, they shouldn't be like picking and choosing what they do and where they go. Like I've never understood that concept. It just seems really weird. Like within really clearly defined parameters for a really specific purpose, fine. But the overarching is it's still as directed by your coach. Just fighters who kind of just run off and go somewhere. I think I think it it's like comes from the top. The 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 head coach or the trainer doesn't have proper control over them if they're just like or not giving them what they need if they're just like running off and doing yeah weird shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with Kieran, man. Like uh, we, it's kind of hard. We're, we're we're blessed with a team that's big enough to be able to handle our own clinching and own sparring and mm. we just never do it, man. Like I just, yeah, we, we just got a, a hierarchy of fighters and we just don't need to do that. I can understand it from a gym that might not have um, similar sparring partners or clinching partners or whatever. Um, and what, like what Kieran said, if it's prearranged for a particular reason and the trainers are, are discussing it for for a point and purpose, yeah, okay, fair enough. But um, outside of that, man, like I, I, I've never quite understood it. It's just maybe in an off season, in inverted commas, like just to get some rounds in with someone different, just to stay fresh and have a bit of fun, just to get out of the, out away from us, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, like absolutely, we don't, we just don't flat out don't do it, man. And I, I've kind of been under the. Uh, maybe I'm wrong in it. Maybe it's something we need to do, but, you know, um, we've got a solid group of girls that can help each other out at different weights. Um, we've got guys at different weights. The heavyweights are the harder ones. If you've got you know, one or two heavyweights that stick out different from everybody else, but um, it's never been a thing for me. And I, I'm kind of, I'm just against it, to be quite honest. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd if I had your stable of people at your gym too, Andy, you got more than enough credentials at your gym to yeah. carry your fucking team for sure, mate. Just say it with a bit of pride, bro, because, mate, you've built an amazing team in your gym, mate, and that's why you're one of the best gyms in Australia. So fucking hold your head high with that, mate. Jeez, man, I appreciate that. You didn't, get, flowers. you didn't get the email at all, Chris. Flowers. You didn't get the email at all. Um, <laughs> I think it's more, it's a lot of time when it's all the most through trainers. That's it's one opinion. thing, but it's when students or members go and do do it out of their own thing because I've got a mate down there and they go mm -hmm. and do it. And I've seen a couple of like little groups in Victoria even that are like five or six fighters from different gyms that kind of do their own training outside of their main training. And we've had it a couple of times with boxers here who have gone, oh, I went to this other gym and sparred. And I'm like, boxing, sparring especially, sometimes you're in there just to be you like – they they go to war and going to another gym where you've got you don't have your trainer there to look after you yeah. it's just uh, i find like i think jujitsu and stuff have kind of brought that culture in of like you can train at 50 different gyms but when it's especially when it's sparring it's like man you that like not telling yeah, your trainer and going there on your own it's what you pull out what happens like you're, you're spot on man like oh yeah fuck, yeah i just went down and sparred someone else i thought it'd be pretty good like Part of it's on us too, right? We've got to explain the reason why that shouldn't happen or should and say like, the reason I'm not going to let you do that is A, I can't be there or a trainer can't be there to supervise it unless it's a trainer that you really trust. But even when it's a trainer, trainer you really trust, it's hard enough to keep people uninjured in your own fucking gym, let alone sending them off somewhere to go, hey man, just go do some pinching over there. They might go start clinching with that person they're matched to clinch with, and then, oh, hey, 
fucking come on over here, man, jump in. Yeah, so and so is here today, man. You'll get some quidging in with her. Knee clash, knee. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, it's it's just too. It's yeah. hard to manage, man. Like I. But even yeah. as the host, Jim, it becomes hard too because, like, there's a couple of guys that come here and spar with us and they're good guys and it's fine. But I've had others come in and you almost feel awkward coaching your own guy when they're sparring him because they're just there on their own. They don't have a second set of eyes telling them what to do. And, you know, it's just the, like kind of gets to the point where I've just started and people's like, don't come in without your own trainer because I'm like, man, I don't want to have somebody else's responsibility on top of my own guys. Yeah. If it's yeah. out of fight scene, it's hard when you got when you got mates in the industry and train at different gyms. And I could kind of understand it. Like if it's in summer, you're not preparing for a fight. I, I, if you get a heads up, it's mad. Like we've had a couple of guys go and do sparring, whatever, because their mates train at wherever. It's like, yeah, cool, man. Go down, hang out. It's like go and have a play date with your mate. That's okay. But you don't have a fight coming up and you're not fucking going down ex gym yeah whatever but yeah yeah maybe 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 i should do it more i don't know I, i'm just not game enough to try it too much um because i just i'm too worried about pulling out of fights and well I, even like you said before and it's hard enough trying to keep everyone control sometimes in your own gym when you got a bunch of 20 people in there yeah. all doing crazy shit fuck i had one poor kid adam i doing well in your recovery but Fuck, I walked away. <laughs> That's never a good way. So I hope you're doing well with your recovery. And uh, oh, through the power yeah. of modern medicine and prayer, you should walk again. I walked into to this. Like, I walked away from the gym for one night. And they clinched and fuck me. Next time I get the phone call, he's lying in hospital. He's almost lost a testicle because he got his testicle burst open. Oh, yeah. You just told me about this. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's go. Fucking oh. that. He's not. He's not. He's not. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> it's tough even to control your own gym sometimes. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, that's any my, my funny story. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, um, Chrissy. Other than the hopefully the fight, what else is coming up? Anything the guys should people should keep an eye out on for? Um. For me personally, uh. Yeah, I might be possibly back overseas very soon. Um, just yeah, and you won't see this one coming. It's just some shit I do. I don't do anything little. I don't do anything sideways. I do everything big, and uh, I don't give a fuck what happens to me while I'm over there. I'm going to do it. So, so um, which which week of uh, Dana White's Contender Series are you going on? <laughs> I'm just going to take a step in the dark. No, we, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully that option comes to fruition because we're in talks at the moment and um and then yeah probably look in reality it's like, bare knuckles bare knuckle if it's body or the face what's the difference huh i'm just gonna get to everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, you know, at the end of the day all the muay thai community is behind you everyone hates david leduc <laughs> anything else i can get <laughs> but yeah i appreciate i appreciate you guys having me on the, this podcast you know, i love you all i love the uh I know I'm doing things like kickboxing fights and that, but I'm a Thai boxer at heart. I love the Thai community. I love the Thai boxing community we've done here in Australia, and I love being a part of it. So I appreciate these moments where I can talk to good people like you three gentlemen and, um, yeah, and talk with some more good stuff. These boys love you so much. Last week I asked them if they had a heavyweight that could fight you in December, and neither of them did. So either they don't want anyone hurt or uh, they just love you so much they don't want to be on the side. I feel sorry for the old man. <laughs> Kieran, good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Tomorrow. It must be excellent for you to be get some human contact again. Yeah. Kieran. Yep. Andy. You too, Sai. I was just about to say that. You too, Sai. Si. Yeah, you too, Sai. Si. Welcome back, man. Welcome back. <laughs> yes. We're just thinking about ourselves. We've got to give something to you. Welcome uh, back, man. Yeah, good stuff. Welcome back, Sai. I hope you smash it, buddy. Yeah. One week in, I'll be ready to lock down again. All right, cheers, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye.